name is Helen Martin and um, I'm uh, uh, lecturing um, on a contemporary crafts course at Farmouth University for the last 17 years. I'm also um, an AHRC PhD, 3D3, <laughs> at the moment, um, looking at communicating archaeology through digital craft practice. And you'll have to excuse me because I've just literally written out a very brief thing to talk to you about material resonance today. But I'm doing two other talks as well. If you're more interested to know much more in more depth about the work that I'm currently doing and, and some other thoughts, then I'm speaking later today at Digitag and also tomorrow I'm going to be in Digital Visualisation Beyond the Image. So. I'm, I'm apologise for, for reading, but I'll try and make it not too, uh, not too dull as ditch. Um, I produce playful, uh, clearly, resonant works using a variety of appropriate materials, frequently alluding to function, borrowing and abstracting meaning from both domestic and ritual objects, connecting past and present. Much of my work follows three persistent themes. I focus upon fundamental drives and needs, reproduction, consumption and protection. The changing balance of these preoccupations continues to concern us all greatly. I have a particular interest in material selection and use. I use the term resonance to describe the language of material. Each material speaks, has its own unique significance, tone or frequency. As a contemporary maker, I exploit the language of material choice and accept that materials resonate that matter communicates. I engage traditional craft techniques alongside digital technologies. Conceptually, I increasingly turn my focus upon the domestic. I'm interested in the repetition of use, the beauty of a vital tool, the meditation in the everyday task, and the rhythm of doing. I reinterpret and translate what I consider to be significant. I often produce things that allude to function but are purposefully fraudulent. I'm currently looking at reinterpreting archaeological material from the site known as Tremeau in Penryn, the site of Cornwall's university. And between 2008 and 2011, excavations were undertaken by the Cornwall Archaeological Unit, revealing evidence of habitation since the Mesolithic period. I've long been using gabbroic clay in my ceramic work. Let's see if this... I've long been using cl gabbro clay in my ceramic work. I choose to reference and emphasise the uniqueness of place through the archaeological and geological history of Cornwall. With the help of Dr Imogen Wood from Exeter University and staff from the Royal Cornwall Museum, I was able to source pieces of gabbroic pottery found on site at Tremeau, one fineware and one courseware. These 4,000-year-old gabbroic clay shards were thin-sectioned, mounted in resin and scanned at the highest magnification. At the heart of this piece of work sits ChemScan, a sophisticated machine providing automated mineralogy and petrography. Cambon School of Mines, on the site at Tremeau, has one of only 61 existing ChemScan machines. This scan gave me data on the clay formulation, interesting in its makeup, it's clearly a good refractory material, suitable to successfully withstand thermal shock, which explains the number of large-scale finds and the long-term use of this material. The scans almost also gave me vibrant imagery for digital textile printing. After establishing the colourways through ChemScan, I transferred the information to SmartPrint and digitally printed onto fabric, as you can see. Sight over time, five metre oven gloves, and I marvel at the perfect circularity of this ongoing investigation. Who would imagine that the machine enabling this magnification and detailed analysis would be situated directly on the site where the 4,000 year old shards were dug? In exploring the communication of archaeology through digital craft practice, I bring into focus that which would otherwise remain unseen. Through magnification, this reinterpretation focuses intensely upon the gabbroic clay shard, compelling our attention through exaggerated scale and focus upon the everyday object. It's clear that in the past, 
the boundaries between objects valued for purpose and those valued for contemplation were blurred. In this work, I've combined both. In thousands of years, I'm not convinced that the human condition would have changed all that much. Our drives and needs remain the same, as do our most basic preoccupations, connecting us to those timeless, mundane actions. Churning around in my mix is a fascination with resonant materials, with the archaeology, the tools and processes, sight and technology over time. I'm intrigued by the way we lived in the past and the way we live in the present. There's a paradox involved in that the similarities and differences are equally astonishing. Science and technology are challenging and informing all aspects of our lives. My making process is subjective, personal and poetic, but in addition also rational, interdisciplinary and analytical. I continue to reinterpret archaeological material to create contemporary indicators in the hope that these objects sing about our own culture and reflect our place in time. And that's it.